In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions. We help people we do. build muscle, get stronger, burn body fat, feel better. But we also like to have a lot of fun on the podcast. And the way we open up this podcast is with introductory conversation. We talk about current events, talk about each other, and we just generally talk. Uh, so here's what we did in this episode. We start out by mentioning Adam mixing the green juice and pure from Organifi. Uh, he wanted the mental sharpness that I was talking about the other day. So he mixes it at the beginning of the episode. Watch and wait. Mm. About 40 to 45 minutes in, you can hear a marked improvement in his verbal fluency Just kicks right and in. sharpness. Uh, and that's by Organifi, by the way. Organifi is one of our sponsors. They make organic supplements, including protein powders that are plant-based, of course, organic. Here's how you get your Mind Pump exclusive discount of 20% off. Just go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code Mind Pump. Then Adam talked about how he pranked one of our employees, Rachel. I hope she doesn't quit over that, Adam. I <laughs> talked about how Tom and Jerry turned 80, one of the most politically incorrect cartoons of all time, yeah. which makes it hilarious. One of the last remaining. Justin talked about how astronauts are using a new piece of equipment in space to help them uh, from losing muscle and bone mass, because that's what can happen when you're in space. I talked about seeing the original blue light blocking glasses. These are the glasses. I think they were they were originally invented in the 80s. Yeah. We were walking around outside and someone was wearing My them. My grandma's wearing them still. And it really made me happy that we work with a company like Felix Gray. Felix Gray makes blue light blocking glasses that are not ugly, like the original blue light blocking glasses. They don't change the color of the world, yeah. so you're not looking through orange or red lenses. They're almost clear or pretty much no tint to them whatsoever, but they effectively block blue light and they're stylish they look really good of course the company felix gray here is how you get your hookup go to felixgrayglasses.com that's f-e-l-i-x-g-r-a-y glasses.com forward slash mind pump you'll get free shipping and free returns then we talked about the show on hbo called mcmillions it's this it's a show about how the mafia swindled the uh, monopoly game through mcdonald's kind of cool i talk about the benefits of masturbation Good news for Justin. Big science there. Then we talked about Jeff Bezos and how he bought the most expensive house in LA, and mm. it basically cost him almost nothing because yeah, like he's so rich. like pocket change for him. Crazy. I talked about antioxidants and cancer. It's not what you think. And then we talked about carbohydrates and strength. Then we got into the fitness questions. The first question was, what are your thoughts on two-a-days? This is where you work out twice a day instead of once a day, so we have a nice discussion there. The next question do endurance rep ranges like 15 to 20 reps help at all with strength and muscle building? So we talk about the benefits of higher reps. The next question, this person says, look, I've seen conflicting arguments around the metabolism boosting effects of lean muscle mass. Apparently a pound of lean muscle mass doesn't burn that much extra calories, but why do people's metabolisms get so much faster when they lift weights? What's going on? So we break that down. And then the final question, this person says, what are the best ways – to deal with stress. Also, this month, MAPS split our advanced bodybuilding physique competitor, bikini competitor workout program. It's six days a week in the gym, gives you all your workouts, has video demos, everything you need to follow this program is in there. It's 50% off, it's half off, huge sale. Here's how you get your discount go to mapssplit.com, that's M A P S S P L I T.com. And use the code SPLIT50, S-P-L-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. Yahtzee. I'm uh, I'm experimenting. I uh, can see what you're doing <coughs> over you there. Always yeah. experiment. Well, you know, I have, I'm have. Uh, i That's not the way you take it, though. What do you mean? What? Oh, this I, thought is how you, you, I thought you were experimenting the other way. Stupid. Ooh. No, I, I I haven't done this <laughs> That's yet. That's biohacking. And uh, <laughs> yeah. what, what did we figure last time it took Sal about... Uh, Oh, you're gonna drink it right now? Okay, yeah, thirty minutes, right? Okay, now, now, see if I say something brilliant. Thirty this is, minutes. Okay, I want everybody who's listen, listening actually, to the it podcast. Actually, it actually tastes really good. It does. Hmm. If you're listening to the podcast right now, here's what Adam just did. Mark the time. <sighs> He's drinking Stamp it. a bottle of Organifi green juice mixed with pure. This mm. is a yeah, a, yeah. a brilliant combination. Different taste, I came but up good. With it myself. Yeah, and in thirty minutes, I it's stick like with a, the name. I keep it pure. minty, minty with like a lime, lemon or lime. Yes. Taste. and in thirty minutes, you'll feel the 
the brain search. The buzzer. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, mark, mark it down. So maybe Doug could keep the time. It's like an electrical surge Doug, of neurons. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of pressure, though. I feel like Doug's going to be like looking at me when the 30 minute mark. Like, yeah. Say something smart. Adam. Say something smart. <laughs> <laughs> There's pressure. It's a fucking commercial. You yeah. got to fucking Adam's sell this shit. <laughs> mitochondria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's 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 flux capacitor. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. One, of the, one of those two. Yeah. yeah Make yeah. up a word right around yeah. that time. Uh, hey, did you see. Uh, <clears throat> Did you see what I did to Rachel the other day? No. So, uh, are you not being nice? No, no. It's, uh, I'll reprimand you. Playful. Just okay, being playful. Right, right. So, um, she asked me. So the, we did the the sweater launch, right? She just did a she just did a release on the the new hoodie that we did, which I love. Yeah. And it's she goes, so what there? She comes up to me at the <laughs> beginning of work, and she goes, she goes, hey, uh, before you leave today, could we could I get some photos of you in the hoodie? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. He's like, I walked out with just the hoodie on. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a good prank, no. Adam. Yeah, so that's a lawsuit. Here's the fun. Here's the thing that's um, <laughs> the three of us are. This is the, we're all old men for sure. Like in, in the sense of like totally we're not cool social media guys. Yes. We just are not yeah. right. We don't have the angles. No, that's the we just no. don't care. I, yeah. That's more. That's the truth. Yeah. That's the and it's not me. You know, what I'm saying like it just if it, before Instagram. Existed. Uh, I would just. Ne- I would yeah. never do anything like mm-hmm. this. So, anyways, I was a bully to people that are influencers. But she, she, she <laughs> oversee- you, <laughs> I was. Dick. I just right. was. Yeah. He's just coming out with this yeah. <laughs> confession. Yeah. 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 Right. I'll be honest. That was me. So, so I, I, I say, yeah, I tell her that, and then we, we, we go outside. Uh. Uh, Eli's got the camera and Rachel's like, you know, just, just, and we go outside. She goes, you know, just go for a walk. And we're gonna I'm like, really? Just by myself, just go for a walk and <laughs> pretend like you're not shooting me. Like, all right, whatever. Right. So I play along, right? Cause most awkward. And I'm ever. already, I, and I'm, I have to be very careful about, uh, you know, these, this is our staff and they're trying to do their job. And, you know, her part of her job is, you know, the apparel side of the house and, you know, I, she's done an incredible job with, um, you know, the the stuff that she's putting out and then and the organization of it and the consistency. Oh, I love the setup. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I had yeah. to definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes a shit sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm aware of this while I'm also doing something I don't like to do at all, right? But I'm trying to, and she's just like, and I'm like, you know, Rach, this, this really isn't like, on brand, you know. That's I know. That's the angle that I have to take with her. I, think. Uh, if I just if I bitch that like I don't. I don't like, want to do that's a dirty. Doesn't word. work. Yeah, yeah. I don't Not want, on brand. Yeah, yeah. On boss, brand. boss can't be that way. I'm supportive. I'll work whatever. So I do. We do the whole shoot. They take all these different shots and everything like that. And then you know she's like, okay, that's good. You know, and I'm like, let me see him real quick. And, and we're. I'm like, no, no. I'm like, okay. I so, said, okay. And she's like, listen. She's like, I don't give a shit how stupid you look. She's like. We need to we need to show people that we have this, and I want to sell hoodies. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. That's where you get me, right? Always numbers, money. So, <laughs> <laughs> so she, she has wins. To lead with that. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So she wins, and so uh, we we walk away, and then I come back in. I say, okay, could you please at least do this? I said, uh, I don't like posting things like cool guy. I'm like, be on brand as far as like our flavor yeah. figure something out make fun of me or something yeah don't try and post me looking cool like i just don't want that like she's like okay i'll, I'll figure something out so i so that that next, this is like a few days ago right so i go away and then uh up pops the post you know <laughs> and did you guys read the post no you guys yeah. didn't read the post no, no, no. What is so one of the photos she took she they had me sit on the uh bus stop Right, and so <laughs> I guess for the I thought she was taking a picture of you through our mirror. No, uh, no our window. No, she they, they they had me sit on the bus stop, and and then she the caption says, uh, "Waiting waiting for the bus like calf gains." Dot dot dot. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes it never comes. Oh. Brilliant. I was like, oh. oh, like I died. Right. Yeah. So she gets a raise. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Right. It. I said, and I was. I was extremely, actually, very happy. I was like, what a great job, and that is so more on brand for us. I love her. I love that she's. Like, but of course, I had to jab back. <clears throat> yeah. So I said, oh, dirty, and then I put side note. Uh, uh, Mind Pump is looking for new brand management. <laughs> it's oh, part. DM Rachel. Oh, so no. The last like she fuck, getting hella oh, DMs. DMs like crazy. Oh. 
<laughs> and they're all like really long DMs that people are sending to her, like their resume. Like and full shit. resume. Yeah. They're like, hey, you know, I saw yeah. that you guys are looking for it. Yeah. That what they a lot of them obviously don't know is that that's I her. Just got position. plane tickets. I'm coming next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. she's she sent me Please a text message me. later that night. She's just like, I fucking hate you. Yeah, she's <laughs> screenshotting all the DMs that she's getting of people that are like trying to apply for the position. Seriously, oh, that's hilarious. Uh, that's perfect. <laughs> Do you guys ever do that to one of your friends? Where this is before like uh, caller ID or whatever, where you're on a long drive, you go into a gas station, you know, bathroom or something like that, and you write you know, for a good time or whatever, and you put your friend's phone number. You yeah, we that? did oh, that yeah. to you up in Truckee. Uh, in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, you put my actual phone number. Oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah, in Truckee, yeah. there's that there's that burger joint. There. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and they have the whiteboard. Uh, you you know? put my phone number there, huh? <laughs> just me. I wasn't gonna tell. I was gonna hope it like just came to fruition, and then you uh, found out really later. Weird, yeah. weird calls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, that's actually, where that's coming I've from. Actually, had no calls. Yeah, yeah it's no, hard it's, to do it nowadays. With it was with a 900 caller, number with caller ID. Oh, you didn't put my actual number. No, oh, that's not. That's yeah. But I said I think we put your. Instagram yeah, handles. What we did. That's probably what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You got to put slide in the DMs. We wouldn't do that to you completely, you know, <laughs> yeah. just enough. Well, you guys know now that I know that the retaliation is going to be, and it's usually mean and ugly. Yeah, you're, it is. You're, yeah, a, you're a bad a... retaliator. <laughs> yeah, like you take it to the next it's level. Not cheeky. I, I don't. Damn. I don't like to. I like to skip levels. <laughs> you do. There's you... no need to go to the. Ne- just go straight to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Escalate hella fast. <laughs> Let's yeah. just stop I, it. I take a video of him sleeping. The next, like the next thing he's like insulting my mother. Red button. I'm like, whoa, dude. Like you took it to mom's already. his new. Clear missiles like right away. <laughs> Pictures of you yeah. when you were a kid. Like, Holy yeah. shit, Look how dude. retarded he was. Yeah. 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 It's Sorry. So oh my God. Yeah. Sorry. I said a politically incorrect word. <laughs> you did. My bad. Speaking of politically incorrect, uh, guess what turned 80 recently? Mm. Tom and Jerry. Wow. Tom and Jerry has been around for 80 Those psychotic years. cartoons. Now, that, are they, do they now? Are they still releasing new content, or is it just on? I thought it was just on repeat. I think it might. I think they might. But I mean, I don't. I don't know how. It's not like the Tom and Jerry I grew up with. If you're if you're listening to this podcast and you're a millennial or younger, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Go on. I don't know. Maybe you can find them on YouTube. Yeah. Sure Look you up can. old. I showed my kids. Yeah, vintage and, Tom and, and Jerry. They I regretted are, it afterwards. They're the worst. They're the worst. They're yeah. so they're the bad. best. Yeah, I love it. It's so violent. Smoking cigarettes and killing each other and yeah. just, you know, racist characters coming out of that thing. <laughs> yes, dude. It's so it's bad. All of that stuff. Oh, it's so bad. Well, we've seen even like uh even like Disney evolve. Um yeah. we I, Katrina and I were just talking about this cuz Well, uh, the cartoons now have a a, a warning. Yeah. It, yes. Well, even even Pinocchio. Dude. So we that? we just saw uh we were just watching was it not Aladdin. What was a Jungle Book? I don't know. It was one of those like old ones mm-hmm. um, on Disney, like on the Disney Plus. We could watch. It was like, Jungle Book. <clears throat> it yeah. was, huh? It had to be Jungle Book because yeah, that was yeah. what was playing today, yesterday when I came yeah. home. And Katrina's because they like had stereotypical, you know, depictions of some of people or whatever. Yes, uh-huh. they had that warning, and then also they reference like smoking, yeah, like a lot of racist smoking. Indian stuff. They yeah. make a they yeah. make like a smoking Big reference, time. and then they so they have to put up like a, a warning on that. I I that know. was really interesting. <laughs> it's yeah. so oh. it's so funny. Those old cartoons are terrible, dude. Like the old Dumbo. Uh, I don't know if you guys like have seen it in a long time or not, but there's this whole scene where he basically eats mushrooms and trips balls. Oh yeah, I did see and that. I was like, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, man, I, I need to be like lifted. I need to be elevated to appreciate this. Well, you guys remember um, Warner Brothers had Speedy Gonzalez. Remember him? Yeah, <laughs> it was a little the yeah. mouse. Yeah, yeah. A little Hispanic stereotypical, mouse. Yeah. like everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's super fast or whatever. And yeah. they eliminated that character because of that. Because yeah. of the the because they considered it right now. What do you guys think about that stuff? You know, look until they fucking change Mario from Mario Brothers, I have no <laughs> empathy. <laughs> I have no empathy. Uh, I Louis, don't care. Luigi. Yeah, nobody it's says a Luigi. shit. Luigi. Yeah. Hey, I'm a, Until they hey. change Lucky Charms I'm and Mario. I'm changing the pipe. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they didn't say anything about Lucky Charms. That, uh, yeah, exactly. I was going there. Next. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, got, come on. Got to change. Uh, hey, uh, taste Speedy. the rainbow. I loved. Hey. I loved Speedy Gonzalez. Tighty, tighty. He was one of my favorite characters. Super fast. I know, man. Hey, gotta, Justin, gotta you t- you tagged uh, Sal and I on a post uh, yesterday. Yeah. Um. It was. It looked like it was a almost like a um Smith machine with with like uh, arms on it and she like yeah, it, conformed to the body a little bit like yeah. for, for astronauts. Yeah, it's kind of. I know it kind of has like a Smith machiney kind of feel, but it, it, I think it's called a grasshopper. But what was cool about it, and somebody had tagged me on this because we were talking about astronauts and, and lifting and everything, and 
uh, I guess this guy, like, it looks like he created this really cool uh, way for them to, you know, uh, I think it's mechanically and it's it, it's powered by electricity. So you can add all this force and, and program it. So when you're in space, you know, you can actually get a substantial amount of load. Because, I mean, think about it, like having actual like weights up there, they're not going to weigh shit, <laughs> no. you know? So it's like, like 10 plates up there. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, of course not. That's how it's, no, yeah. no, no, but that's how it's going to work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're basically almost like, str- almost, it did, I didn't it's really, like pushing you down yeah, in, yeah. in a sense, right? It's just a Electric resistance. Le- electric resistance. Yeah. But it, I mean, it, the way that like, he, I mean, it, it, the way that they set it up and engineered it, it looked pretty like it had two different um, like like an elbow almost for the arm. So it was like a little bit more uh, travel in terms. Of, it wasn't like a straight up and down line like a Smith machine. So, so you can move horizontal, you can move vertical, horizontal, diagonal. Vertical. Yeah, you could do bench. You could do overhead press kind of. Uh, it, you know, you could do a lot more moves that were like legit. So I, I was like, oh, wow, that's really smart. In the past, they've used- uh, That 100% solves that problem. Uh, so it, well, they they have resistance training equipment in space that's just a new machine it's a new one that can add more load in the basically. past they've used uh, pneumatic equipment yeah uh, so which we've had in gyms before right uh-huh. the, where you, you was it kaiser the air kaiser does the air, the air, yeah, air ones, pressure right? yeah. kaiser does like that. that and then in and then before that do you guys remember nautilus used to have uh these machines that you would enter in the resistance it was electronic it was actually it's been around since the 90s the air one also right i don't know if it was air or if it was magnets but you enter into the the mm. resistance okay. And let's say I put 150 pounds, the positive portion of the rep was 150, but it would automatically calculate a heavier uh, negative. Mm. Yeah. Do you guys ever use that machine? I've used something like that. Yeah. It was such a piece of shit. It was so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, it's funky, especially on the way back. Well, yeah. the reason why it was hard is because if you if you reverse direction at all with your rep, you got the heavy load. Yeah. So when you do your press, as soon as you stop, it's like, and it's, it just didn't feel smooth. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> the ARX is another one that's out there. Like the, Isn't they, that the one that Greenfield does? Yeah, it's Greenfield. Uh, uh, what's his name? The, the other bulletproof guy. Uh, but they promote all the time about doing it like once, twice a week where it's like oh, God. stupid. Yeah, they can only do fewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, ma- they do max effort and all that it, stuff. It makes sense this. as an astronaut to me. Yeah. It does. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I, I can see using it for that, but for the average person, that's yeah. just Well, silly, okay, you, you, resistance, the, the rules, same rules apply for resistance training. There's a certain amount of frequency, volume, and reps. That's always going to produce the best results. Yeah, even off Earth. It uh, doesn't matter. What they say What they say with that machine is, you know, five, you know, 10 minutes gives you a full body workout equivalent to you know three days a week in the gym no it doesn't no it doesn't do that it's, it's not gonna i remember when we that. interviewed dave asprey and you know he was saying a bunch of stuff and i was like okay that's smart that's smart smart and they start talking about exercise yeah. that's so said, smart i only need yeah, to do 10 a, minutes of yeah. resistance training it's max effort and it gives me all the results i need uh-oh no stepped outside your <laughs> lane dude <laughs> yeah. stepped outside your lane bro it's back when we were still being yeah. nice i know yeah. oh if that, if that happened well it's today. cool but it's also over the over the phone too yeah. so yeah 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 exactly dude uh i had a little um I felt like I went in a time machine the other day. Oh yeah, but yeah. We went. We had lunch. I think you guys saw it too. We're walking back. Do you guys remember the original blue light blocking glasses? Oh yeah, the blue blockers. <laughs> blue. <laughs> I saw that guy. Like the ones, like the aviator, like looking ones. Dude, they're ugly. Yeah. Remember that when like, they first like, came like out? John Wilkes Booth kind of like you know like they got the, like the, the the tint and then the aviator Dude, action. Blue blocking glasses really have come a long way because well, still there's still a lot on the market that are terrible looking. They're just not nice. They color everything weird, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but those were the old original ones. The, Watch them come back though. And st- I mean, the guy was wearing them. Yeah, yeah. Older guy. They're hideous. Mm. But uh, was he that much older than us? Hideously cool. Yeah, I son guess. of a bitch. Yeah. We're old too. As I say, it looked like he was your age. <laughs> yeah. He definitely looked like your age. My dad owned a pair of those back in the day. <laughs> My parents did too. You did see, they? Yeah. But they, they use them for driving. They're that there. was the, that was the whole pitch, wasn't it? Back they're in the day. They're hella oh, cheap, yeah, aren't they, Doug? What, how much ass things? Thirty-two bucks. Oh, I thought they were like even cheaper than that. I could have sworn like on the commercials back then it was like get two pairs for no, ten dollars. No, 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 no. And I remember my dad bought those, and you know the way they sold them was like it's easy on the eyes or whatever. They used to, they, you know, yeah. the commercials for them. They used to pitch it on uh, night driving. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what, what a terrible. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it like makes everything because, orange because hey, the, you, and the bright white light coming in. That I I remember those. If you look up old blue blocker commercial. Watch, it's like it's always like some somebody somebody driving at night and the, the I remember. Yes. Yeah. That was a bad idea, bad commercial. Yeah, because when they're What's they, one of the number one reasons for you know car accidents in the in the at night, you know? Falling yeah. asleep. Here, put these glasses on them, make you tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, there's the original commercial right there. What is that one? With the sombrero? Know. Looks like your cousin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hella uh, racist, dude. No, I'm just saying, Jeez. bro. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm all fired God, up you with the Mario poli- Luigi. Politically incorrect stuff today. I know. Wait me, bro. I, actually, I can't wait for your DMs tomorrow. I apologize for the, the, the word <laughs> I said earlier. Oh, you're oh, fucked, please. bro. Yeah. It's like you, every time I, that's I know up. when you do it, yeah, you I get do. hella DMs. I know, I do. Apologies. People. No, well. They've come a long way, I think, is the point of this. Oh, yeah. Now we got the Felix Gray that look amazing. They look really yeah. good. My daughter wears hers all the time. Yeah. Loves them. Every well, time she comes home. You know, it's, in, it's funny because uh, I've sold it so hard to my son that he actually like took it on his own to bring it with him because he went to his friend's party where it was a sleepover where they have like they play video games and geek out all night and he was like, oh, and he grabbed it and I'm like, I saw him grab it out the door. I was like, oh, you got your blue blockers and so he was like all about it. You want to know how I sold it to my, to my son? Hmm. So I kept telling him every time I'd go upstairs, he'd be in his room doing his homework, and I'd always have to remind him, hey, put on your, your Felix Grays, and he'd put them on, and you know, he wouldn't argue anything, but I'm like, I got to sell it to him so that he always does this when I'm not around, because he's on the computer so much yeah. that, you know- the, uh, You can't control it always. Yeah, and you, and you want to, you know, there's the daytime ones, right, that block the, the damaging blue light, and if you're on a computer all the time, you, you want to do that, especially if you start as a kid. So I'm like, how do I sell this to him? Because fear doesn't really work well with kids unless you really scare the shit out of them, then you just feel bad. (laughs) So um, I I did that once. I'll tell you guys that story another time. So I think think we all have. So I told, so what I did was I said, hey, listen, I said, blue light fatigues the eyes. You're not able to receive information as quickly and it slows down your hand eye coordination. That's all I said. I let him piece it together. <laughs> I let him piece together that. That's so he's going like, wait a second, gaming speed. Totally, I need to be good at totally. That. So now when he plays his games, bro, it's part of his like preparation. Oh, it's so dude. good. Dude. Got, he's got a glass of water. Oh, puts da- on the blue uh, and he's dad ready to crush. one son zero. Boom. Have you guys checked out that new show that's on uh, Apple Plus? It's uh, it's it's called Mythic Quest. Or mythical quests. You no. find all the weird ones, dude. It's awesome. It's like a, it's a mix between The Office and uh, let's see something else. But I I don't have a comparison. <laughs> <laughs> it's just good. It's, it's like it's, it's like it, if you took two ingredients yeah. and mixed them together. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like well, it, it's all about like building, developing video games. But it's uh, it's all the whole work culture for it. It's funny. It's got the guy from uh, it's Sunny in Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, always okay. Sunny in Philadelphia. Like one of those guys. <clears throat> um, and uh, it's really, it's really witty. It's, it's, it's totally worth your guys' time. Really? Is it yeah. like how new is it? How many yeah, episodes? Brand new. Oh yeah, wow! I, we just started watching. We got like through five of them, like back wow. to back. It's um, that good. It's good, dude. Oh wow! It, it, they're only thirty minutes long, so you. Just I like it. I like having a show like that though, because we have we have our shows that we watch that are like lighthearted, where we're like working still. And yeah. It's on in the background. Yeah, you don't have to pay attention. Yeah, you don't have to pay attention. You know what I just found? Have you guys seen? Uh, this is on HBO. It's uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg's new series on McMillions. No, it's got two episodes out. So, do you guys know the the whole Monopoly scam on uh, with McDonald's? Oh, it's Are a yes. scam. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, oh, you guys some guy from, made a ton of money yeah, off there, of. There was a, remember their Monopoly thing you yeah. play? Oh, dude. how did he make a ton of money? Oh, wow. So watch it just because yeah. they did a documentary on this a long time ago. So I'd already seen the original documentary, so I almost didn't watch this, and. I, I told Katrina, I was like, I know this, I know the story. I just don't know. Like, so did he? Like, did he? Did he? I don't even want to share. I'm not really? gonna spoil it. It's that good. It's like it's crazy how it's a series. So <clears throat> it's only got two episodes out. And what I liked about this series on it, so somebody who's listening right now who who's familiar like I was with the other documentary on it, the other documentary is like a one and a half hour, two hour documentary, and they kind of give you like a brief overview. This dives into like the FBI investigation of it and how long it took to unfold all of it. But it's like crazy mafia shit. Wow. Oh, oh yeah, it went on for decades. Oh really? What? Oh, the it was a scam for decades. The winners for like over ten years for McDonald's, millions, millions, twenty five thousand Vipers. Oh, that was all getting funneled to the mafia. Oh <laughs> shit! Yes. It's so sick. they're actually paying out, and then it was all going like so. People that won, I guess I'm going to ask you a lot of details here, but uh, did they did they actually like were they part of the mafia? Like, did they know that they were going to end up giving it to the mafia? So no, who McDonald's? No, like the actual people that won, like, or were they they were, were they part winning? Of the scam? They were part of the scam, right? They okay. were connected to people that were connected to people in the mafia. I got it. So it was like a it was a it's a it's a crazy it was a crazy Just scam a huge racket that they created. And, and the part that's like blew my mind and what I liked about this documentary opposed to the the original one that came out on this. Uh, Mark Wahlberg did it. He's done such a good job on some of this stuff he does now, man. Mm-hmm. That guy's become a great producer. So 
they really dive into the back end of it. All the questions that I had, like, come on, really? McDonald's had that shitty security, something like that happened? Bro, it's the winning pieces for McDonald's was, first of all, a McDonald's wasn't involved in it. They hire a, a, a marketing company called Simon Marketing, which mm -hmm. is like this, they do all the like top end like companies, right? Mm -hmm. And then they hire out a security printing company that does the lottery tickets that's like known for doing very secure. Yeah, that's so much money to you, put into this. You have to have uh, two keys to open the vault that has the winning pieces in it. It gets in a suitcase with handcuffs. Like you would think it was impossible to get to for this to happen, but it did. And so the, and the documentary goes into wow. how this worked and how they didn't get caught for so many years. Do you guys, that when you guys wow. watch stuff like that, this happens to me, so I want to see if I'm not the only one. Whenever I'm watching a movie or a, a documentary about someone who's doing a heist or theft or you kinda a guy who it. became a drug dealer, I'm always like, like I gotta rub I'm always getting angry <laughs> because I'm always like, stop there. You made your money. Get the fuck yeah, out. Go. Yeah, go. Yeah, they always, yeah. they always push it, and I'm always watching it like, you can get away now. Greed, man. Yeah. Well, Greed. Well, think about, okay, so you heard about it in the news, but I'm sure there's a gajillion other ones you never hear about. <clears throat> oh, of all the people that get away? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're right. Not gonna, there's not going to be stories about it because they just got the money. Yeah, that's just uh, blew my that's, mind right that's, now. That's bank robbery. Yeah. I you, know. Know, you know more, <laughs> you know that uh, bank, robber, bank robbers are more than 50% successful? Now, okay, now is this, you've said this before, yeah. but is this a real Look statistic? I've heard the same stat. Yeah, and yeah. The, the news just doesn't report them. Yeah. They don't report. Now, here, here's what counts, though, too. Somebody goes in, says to a teller, I've got a gun in my pocket. Give me your all your money. She cashes out the fucking of course two thousand yeah. dollars in her teller. Wouldn't, why wouldn't yeah, that the, count? The petty cash. Yeah, that counts. Of course that would count. Yeah, yeah, right. So th those have that happens <laughs> a lot more than you would think. Really, yeah. and yeah. fifty percent of them get away. Yes, and they don't. They don't. They don't. I can't remember where I read that. I remember that, that stat a long time ago. So maybe it's better now. But yeah. uh, <laughs> point break. Uh, I was actually under the I mean, the impression that they break? they never get away. <laughs> Break. <laughs> try to say well, no, well, break. You, sh you should have had some of that pure. Yeah, and that pure juice. ain't working for me. <laughs> look how look how sharp Adam is right oh, now. Oh shit, it's kicking in. Yeah, already. I don't feel that sharp yet. Killing dude. it. So I'll let you know if I feel super sharp. Wow. So fifty percent get away. That's not bad odds. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, how much money would you could you possibly get? That's just it. It's like you don't. It's not worth it. No. Right? no, no Fifteen grand. Yeah. It's a, well, it's a fifty-fifty shot at getting a handful of money. Like, uh, you yeah. know, what I'm saying to last you to your next bank robbery. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I got a study that I think uh, you guys will be very interested in. I know Justin for sure. Oh, will be, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Really interested in the study. It's a cheese study. No, no, no. So mm. it was a study conducted by the Department of Medical Psychology at the University Clinic of Essen. This is in Germany mm -hmm. and they took a group of volunteers and they had them masturbate oh. and what they found <laughs> was were these Valley. all dudes yeah, um, yeah they were all I think so ah. yeah. <laughs> I'm less interested <laughs> no but listen so the master the masturbation increased caused a boost in white blood cells other studies have shown the same thing so the results confirm that sexual what? arousal and orgasm increased the number of white blood cells including Natural killer cells that fight off. Damn, that's infections. why I'm healthy. That's why Justin never gets sick. I am just yeah, I'm a healthy, <laughs> thriving uh, male. He that's just the the same benefits when you have sex. I would assume. No, sex lowers your immune system. No, I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> I was like, what? How does that work? No, I'm just kidding. So same, right? I mean, the, it's it's the it's the the arousal and then the orgasm is. Wow, what... I just came up with a theory. I think I know why this happens. Because mm -hmm. yeah, think about it. why would your body boost your immune system. After you uh, have sex and ejaculate or whatever. Oh, well, you ever? I mean, you know how you are right after that. You but just lay there, fucking. <laughs> you know, yeah. no. You're vulnerable as fuck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything all the support. Yeah, you anything could happen. Anything could kill you. you. Could rob me. So a disease could kill me. Yeah. Lion could eat me afterwards. No, I think it's because you were probably mm. likely in close, obviously close contact with another person, mm -hmm. exposed to their germs, exposed to their potential mm. infections. So after you did that, your Keeps body's the like- the crabs a little at bay. <laughs> it tries to. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I heard. Your body's like, ah, we got to you know strengthen the, the system here because- you Interesting just, theory. You just had dirty sex. Interesting theory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dude, that is science right Doesn't there. that- that's, See, that I beats like your, that. your chimp study. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that really got to it. I did get to yeah. a- I did a post about it too. I was wow. like, Justin's, Justin science better than Sal science. <laughs> I was like, damn, that was good. <laughs> hey, did you guys hear about- uh, I'm not to step my game up, Did you guys Sal. hear about Bezos? No. No, I didn't. What's up? 
So, <laughs> so he just bought the most expensive property in Los Angeles. What? Yes. But here's the deal. That's not surprising. They did the math. I don't know. Let me see how much it is. Oh, okay. He bought it. A, for, it's $165 million. He bought a house for $165. What's, a, what's your property tax Damn. on that, Doug? Oh, <laughs> I, no idea. I, 165 huge. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, check. Oh, wow. Look at the picture of that. Is it? Uh, Can we see more pictures? Let me see what this thing looks like. Oh, oh wow. Oh, yeah, that's a, it's it looks like, like a hotel. Buckingham Palace yeah. right there. Wow. Yeah. Look at the inside. Okay, so check this out, right? I'm going to trip you guys out. <laughs> It's $165 million. Now, when you calculate his how much money he actually has. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Is that like us built buying a fucking mobile home? No, 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 no. It, how it would be the equivalent of if you made $60,000 a year, you spent $75 on a house. Wow. That's wow. how much money he has. He spent $165 million. Just sneezed it. And it's, a, it's literally like if he lifted the cushion hmm. of his couch and got some change. Yeah, he just rummaged through his car. Yeah, and through the. Like, ah, it's yeah, like I you bought a. Change, if though. you made 60 grand a year, it's like you making buying a $75, $75 house. Dang. Wow. 75 bucks. Yeah, that's 60. So if you made 120, it's like you buying a house for fucking. $300? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing. Wow. Even after his divorce, all this stuff? Because didn't, I mean, she took quite a bit of money, right? She took a lot of money, but it, when you have that much money, it doesn't it's matter. Just, yeah, it's just, it's getting silly. Did she silly. take or did she just stay in part of the business? How no, did, he gave her. He cashed her out? Yeah. Well, yeah. His net worth is $131 billion, so... It well, would be two sixty. Yeah, yeah. I, that's where it just doesn't make sense. You know, when you get up to that level, it's like that's just you don't even know what to do with that much money. Well, I mean, think about that. Could you even spend it all? I doubt it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. have you seen some of these Challenge. yachts? Have you seen some of these crazy yachts? That these yeah. Well, the reality is when you get to, when you're someone like him, like money is not even the motivator. No, it's no, money. Right. Money is not even a. It's not even a big deal. It's it's yeah. Maybe even if it was a motivator early on in your career, yeah. it's definitely not now. But I, just, once you get to a point where you have so much money, you can't possibly yeah. now spend the whole it. world's watching what you're doing. Yeah, the things that motivate guys like him is like literally privacy. Yeah, yeah changing the world, yeah. privacy. Yeah. Like yeah. now, think about think about that though. Imagine if you created a product that was so valuable to the world that you got that they gave you that much money because that's literally like, this guy is that rich. Because he created Amazon, which is so valuable to everybody. Right, yeah. it's insane to me. That, but that's also why I think he deserves well, all of it. Of you course, know, people, I, of course, I, I love Amazon. Yeah, yeah. 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 People, people hate, which is I always. He does my cool mind. stuff that, that people don't realize too. Like so, uh, one of the uh, spaceships, like their leftover. Um, Basically, back in the they used to just like let them all just sink to the bottom of the ocean. You know all the uh, <laughs> wow. You know they just they don't clean it up like all the thrusters or whatever, all the yeah. parts. Like they just end up at the bottom of the ocean. So, like SpaceX is starting to reuse a lot of these and try and like have like renewable ways to you know get to space and all that. And so he basically fronted all his own money to to go out there and like scoop up a bunch of them for really them. yeah wow. You Pretty know, cool. here's the thing. I don't care if he does anything else. The fact that he created a product that people want willingly and voluntarily right, that pay we'll, for. Right, we'll use for decades. He doesn't have to do anything else. Yeah, yeah. He, what he did by creating Amazon uh, benefited you know, billions of people around the world. Not only that, he, he opened up a model that so many other businesses That's what I'm saying. now model after. So the, 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 the rippling effect of what he did. Bro, it's like, the, even if you're not yeah. an Amazon person, which is like you have to be a very small percentage of people that don't use Amazon, yeah. even if you're not, the rippling effect of how many other businesses have built their model off of their model now, you're definitely impacted by what Do you know how many done. businesses would not be possible today if it weren't for Amazon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tons. Tons of them. And think about the efficiency that Amazon... Oh, the one click and everything. I mean, they were like known for that. Or you buy something that's at your house tomorrow. That's what I mean. It's just like right away. Do you know what it used to be like? You know, I'm going to talk to the younger listeners for a second. You know what it used to be like when you buy shit <laughs> through the mail? Gather, I used to buy gather around, kids. Yeah, come around. <laughs> gather around. I used to buy supplements online. You'd, you'd buy uh, you buy that shit. Forget online. I'd have to buy yeah. them through the mail. You'd buy it. Yeah. You don't get that shit for you a month. You had to buy it from Tony from GNC. You didn't know what the <laughs> yeah. fuck he was talking about. It'd take you like a month to get to your house. Yeah. Or you'd have to mail to yeah. them what you want. You have to wait for the mail to get to them. Then you have to wait for them to get the mail, process it, and then send you the product. By the time you get the product, you're you're not even working out anymore. It's hard when you live in some rural town, though, and you know you are a you know three time family. This is where the people that fucking hate like Amazon and the WalMarts and stuff is, you know you you live in this rural town. You have uh, you've owned this property for a hundred years. It's been passed down from family member to family member. You've got the general store that's there. And it's provided oh, a, a livelihood for your family, your 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 grandparents, your you yeah. know what I'm saying, and like you've inherited now. And then in this last two decades, 
a company like Amazon and, and Walmart have completely come in and yep. f- completely flipped it upside down. And so those people are, and then the, and anybody that's connected to those people, like if you know Justin was the person we're talking about, he's a close friend of mine, and I, I see how much it's fucked up his life and turned him, everything upside down. Those are the people that uh, get really upset. There's, there's no guarantees yeah. in a, in, a, in a, a free society. There's no guarantees that your business or your idea will always always look ahead and continue to work. I mean, yeah. think about all the people that had to change careers when the you know when the wristwatch was invented. All the people who made you know the the, the what are they called the watches that you hang off the string or whatever pocket watch pocket uh, watch. Yeah. Or what about you know wagon makers? You know when people started driving cars. You know. It's just the way it works, and yes, there's always going to be those people. Well, and that, just kidding. Remember that, that stat. Lose. Remember that stat that I read you guys about the S and P 500, like the com- amount of companies that will be still on there in 15 years. What they oh, yeah. predict, it was oh, like yeah. like a 75 percent overturn. Yeah, mm-hmm. like in just like two decades' time. That's yep. insane. It's, it's hard, dude. This I, is why we have great products. Is because you have to constantly innovate and compete. Because the second you take a break, someone's going to kick your ass. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's just the way it works. So true. Anyway, another cool study. This one has nothing to do with masturbation. Sorry, Justin. Ah, that's all right. Yeah. So yeah. this one was about was an- one. antioxidants. So you guys, have you guys heard me say in the past how, um, like, I use the antioxidant supplements as a wonderful example of how sometimes something that you think is good, taking a supplement of it can actually <clears throat> be bad. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Antioxidants are a phenomenal example of this because at high doses – which you don't get from food. Like you don't get mega doses of, of antioxidants from food, you but you can do that with supplements. When they when people take mega doses of uh, antioxidants, these antioxidants can actually cause uh, protect cancer cells. They can actually prevent your body from killing cancer cells by protecting what? the cancer cells. Yeah. So there's studies that show that people who took like high high doses of vitamin E increase their risk of prostate cancer by 17%. Uh, there was other studies that show that that high doses of beta carotene uh, increased lung, lung cancer risk by 28% in, in, in smokers. That's a lot. Yeah, so uh, this is why you got to be careful with the supplements. Just because there's a, a, a compound in food yeah. that is good for you that we've identified, taking it out, synthesizing it, concentrating the shit out of it doesn't mean you're going to get more benefits. Uh, oftentimes it means you'll you'll do a lot worse. So anyway, you know what one of my favorite things about uh, the keto diet is, by the way? What's that? Uh, when you go your off. Your breath. No, oh, thanks, yeah. Justin. <laughs> Sorry. That's your favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you go off. Yeah. You know when you start to reintroduce carbs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, Man, energized like hell. Huh? Strong. Yeah. Strong. I, my, my strength exploded. It doesn't uh, take nowhere near as much. No, I'm, I, I'm eating because I went keto for a little while because I was trying to reduce inflammation, get the cognitive kind of sharpening, boosting effects. And I did that for probably five or six weeks, maybe a little longer. And then this week I started eating more carbs and I'm, I'm still averaging maybe a hundred grams, 150 grams of carbs a day, which is not much, but it's way more than the, you know, 30, less than 30 grams I was eating before. And man, my workouts are the pumps I get. Like when it comes to, to bulking or building muscle, yeah. carbs really make a big carbs difference. Are king. Yeah. That's why when I see people posting about like keto and Somebody did a post about how ketogenic diets are great for CrossFit. I couldn't believe I saw that post. What? Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I was funny. on there. Other people were on there telling that that they were yeah. wrong yeah. or whatever. That's um, pretty dumb. Or keto and bulking. Very, very hard to do. Yeah. Very hard to get big and strong when you're not eating carbohydrates. But this is why I like to switch in and out of different things because you can really see and notice and appreciate mm-hmm. the value of different foods in different macronutrients. Diet because, fluid. Yeah, because if you're always staying in one lane all the time, you start to lose the or forget the benefits of other macronutrients and, and foods and, and not, stuff Not like only that. that, there's there's times in your life where it makes a lot of sense. Like, uh, you know, let's say you are a CrossFitter and it doesn't make sense for you to be doing it while you're in the, the middle of CrossFit, um, but you go on a, you know, three week vacation or a hiatus for a little bit and you make the transition and you're not working out at all for three weeks. Like mm-hmm. what a great time to transition over into a diet like that, uh, that is satiating that you get to have good. I mean, what's cool about the ketogenic diet too, is like fat's fun to eat, you yeah, know? It is. So it's a, it's not like you're fat you know, some, fun. a low yeah. fat diet is tough to me. A low fat diet is really tough because you're restricting calories and you're restricting fat, which is taste good. So yeah. I don't, I don't go low yeah. fat by the way. I just, I go lower fat, but I never go low fat because of exactly what you said. Yeah. Like, I've done low fat before. Terrible. 
I feel terrible. I feel like my, my libido goes away. Yeah. Just not a good. Oh, I, I remember after I, you know, after I went ketogenic and saw the benefits of me just in bumping my fat up again, I like I've completely like I, I never eat chicken breasts anymore. Like I eat chicken thighs always. Mm. Because it's it's and now when I was competing, He's a leg man. In, yeah. when I'm when I'm competing, I might guy. introduce chicken breast the last like couple weeks when I'm like eating like really lean meat to, to reduce mm-hmm. calories. But for everyday life, like I much rather have thighs taste a million times better, mm. and the benefits of it are incredible. Yeah, I remember when I discovered, and they're cheaper. Yep, and I remember when I discovered uh, uh, the brown uh, turkey meat. At Thanksgiving, I was like a life changing experience. <laughs> Up until that point, I thought turkey was disgusting because the white, you know, the, the, oh, it's the, so dry, so dry. Yeah. And then my dad was like, "Eat this; it's way I juicier." I used to be a breast guy too. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. Now and, I'm a thigh guy. Mm-hmm, thigh guy. Hi, thigh guy. First question is from Official Bruce Love. What are your thoughts on two days? Two days is this is when you're working out twice a day um, instead of once a day, and one of the reasons why people will do this is because they're training at a very high level, lots of volume, and to have the energy and the capacity to finish an entire, all of your workout at one time is difficult, so splitting it up allows you to finish it with, with good energy. Mm. Now, here's the deal. I love it. Yeah. If, if, if you're at this level and you're training with that much volume, splitting up your workout is one of the best things you could possibly do the, 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 well, the convenience factor is a problem. Yeah, and they're probably thinking of like the two super intense workouts, like back to back. Like we used to do that a lot when we were playing uh, football and any other sport, where it was like you're trying to cram, you know, as much intensity in as possible. And um, yeah, the way that you're talking about it is probably the only way I apply it now today. In terms of like, it's a little more reasonable, but I'm just basically splitting almost in half, or maybe just adding a little bit more to to the next workout so I can get the benefit. I hate it, and I'll tell you why I hate it. And before I go into why I hate it, I want to preface this with one: I've done it a lot. Uh, I did it a ton, especially when I was competing. And we've written a program, Maps PED, that has it. So. I'm not saying that nobody should do it and there's not a percentage of the population that there's there's lots of value to it so that exists. I hate it for the majority because I think that it's a very unrealistic thing to sustain and when you stop doing it it really throws off you you got to really know what you're doing with your diet. Yeah. If you were decided if because this is what I see in my experience the people that want to do this they're doing it because they're wanting to do more. They're yeah. wanting to do more to get results faster, to get to their goal quicker, and and they're motivated by a wedding. They're motivated by a vacation. They're motivated by a competition they're doing. And the theory behind two-a-days is get to your goal faster. And that, to me, is the wrong message for that person. I do see lots of value in it in the – extremely consistent person who's been lifting for years and is is trying to scale up their volume and continue. Maybe they're into competing. Like that makes sense to me. And let me tell you, like I didn't get to this point. Like I was competing without doing double days. It was when I got to the professional level because from the year leading up to competing, I ran mostly like an anabolic type of program. Then when I started hitting stage, I was moving to something more like maps aesthetic then I was moving into something like map split when I was still an amateur. And then by the time I got to the professional level, I had scaled to the volume of PED. But it was that I mean, you're talking about not missing a single fucking workout, diet, anything for almost four years straight for me during that time to progress to the point where I saw value in adding an additional workout to my training. I got incredible results leading all the way up to that point without ever having to push to two a days. Uh, two a days. So I don't like it for most people. And I remember we were very hesitant to even write PED. We wrote all the other programs first before PED for that exact reason. Yeah, well, there's some prerequisites. Like if you if you can do your whole workout in one workout and you're doing it appropriately and properly, then stick to that. If you get to the point where you're doing so much volume, so many exercises – that it's just you know it's by the end of your workout you just it, you're wasting your time because you're fatigued. That's when it becomes a good idea to split. Now here's a deal for the advanced person. This may be a great idea. This is how bodybuilders used to work out back in the in the 70s and 80s. They used to call what's called a double split uh, routine, where they would split the body parts up, but they'd also split it from morning and evening. And that for on a consistent basis that works great. But for the average person, here's how you can utilize something like this. It's 
as a sporadic way to get your body to change and adapt. You, if you're consistent you're really, and you're pretty fit, uh, once a day is perfectly fine. But every once in a while, try this. Every once in a while, if you have time to kill and you got a whole day ahead of you, go to the gym or in your garage. This is even better if you have a garage gym. And do a 30-minute workout every two or three hours. Do you know three sets of squats and two sets of bench press and some overhead press, something like that. Every other hour, you, you more than two days, you can do three or four of these workouts. I've done this occasionally. When I say occasionally, I'm talking about like once, you know, every three months or so. I get phenomenal results and gains from doing that. And I think it's because the body responds really well, really well to the frequency, just yeah, frequency, yeah, yeah. Well, splitting up the workout. So, okay, so I, I there is another situation where I do see it, it okay for somebody who maybe is at like a beginner level, and I I do this. This I do quite a bit now. I also, we have a podcast in a gym. We have, you know, access to gyms everywhere we go all the time. And so it's very easy for us to do this. Many times I'm following like a MAPS anabolic type of protocol and I only do two or three of the exercises right, right first thing in the morning or whatever. And I get, that's all, I only have a little bit of time. And then I come back later in the afternoon in the and day then I finish it. Yeah. Like that's two a day, right? That's mm -hmm. considered that. But I'm also managing my volume the same as if I was just going to do it in one workout. So I do see lots of value in that. Like people think that to get a good workout, you have to have this intense one hour yeah. kill yourself routine. And that couldn't be further from the truth. There is nothing wrong with you taking your current workout plan and splitting it up in two workouts that are more like half hour workouts. Yep. And that, that there's, there's a lot of benefit to that. And I think that's valuable. When I think of people that ask me questions about two a day, you think they're going to do like an hour and a half yeah. in the morning, hour and a half. In the yeah. Evening. Or yeah. even just an hour, an hour of an intense training. You know what I'm saying? They're wanting to do more. That's what they're trying to do to promote faster results. And again, uh, you, you don't need to do that to get incredible results. And I would wait to scale to that until I've, if I've gone through all of the MAPS programs, then that, I mean, that's really how it's designed. Like imagine you'd go, like you're somebody who's been listening since the beginning and you have never missed, you've consecutive, consecutively went through MAPS program after program after program. We have scaled them like that. And the reason why PED was last is because it is the peak. It's the peak of the pyramid. Yeah, it's the pinnacle. So like, if, you if, if that's like you're going to be your profession and like I'm going to be a professional bodybuilder or, you know, a professional athlete and I want to ramp myself up to that kind of volume and intensity altogether, that's like you're stretching yourself. And even then you don't want to stay there for very long. Like that's that's something that you're you're testing yourself just like if it's, you know, like I we talk about maxing out, you know, stuff like that. Like there's times where that that's appropriate, I feel, uh, to to be able to know where you stand. Well, and since since you got your gym at home, have you experimented with the like doing a few sets every other hour while you're at home type of deal? I I do that all the time. Isn't it great, uh, dude? It's it's so liberating because honestly, the most of the time when you're thinking about working out, the biggest thing is like, oh my god, I I don't want to get started and then stop, and you right. know, I, you want all that momentum. Once you like free yourself of that, and you just start just grabbing stuff and going, and you kind of have an idea of what you need to accomplish for the day. Like I'll mm -hmm. I'll start with bench and all or squat or whatever it is, and you know I'm just focused completely on that, and then it's like, oh well, I got to go pick the kids up, or oh I got to go take you know go to soccer practice. Then I'll come back and then I'm hitting something else. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's like you just do it in spurts and you get the same, if not better, results. Well, if, I, I did it yesterday and the day before both. One one day I was uh, talking to Rachel and Eli. I was out in the gym. I was doing bench press and some shoulder work. I would do three sets, set down the weight. I'd go in the office. I'd sit down. I was talking to them for 15, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. let's work on this. Yeah. Overlooking at videos. Go back out, did a few more sets. I did it the, the, the yesterday again with Doug. Doug was in here. We we're doing like bookkeeping and, and numbers and shit. I was out there squatting, come back in, and then I talk to Doug for 15 minutes, go back out. Like, yeah, yeah I know if you have that luxury to I, I, that, I'm it's uh, inconvenient yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah, it's yeah. It, but for most people, it's not great for my endurance, though. I'll be honest. Like, uh, like oh, getting it all back to back to back is like, oh, ideal. sure, sure, yeah, sure, but, sure. But yeah, uh, that's probably the only thing I could say. Next question is from Randy Adams 02. Do endurance rep ranges in the 15 to 20 range help with help at all with strength and hypertrophy? Oh my god, yes. Definitely. Sure. I, Especially if you don't do this. Oh, oh man, yeah. I, I when I first it kills me. Dude. When I first learned this, I mean, remember when I, I was reading bodybuilding magazines and muscle books, you know, when I was younger, and all of them said, 
heavyweight and low reps uh, built muscle. Um, none of them recommended this 15 to 20 rep range. And then years later, there was a bodybuilder. I can't remember his name, but he talked about how he liked to train in the 15 to 20 range, and he had a very impressive physique. And being a kid, that would be what convinced me. I see someone's physique. They say something. I'm going to give it a shot. Blew my mind. Yeah. Blew my mind. I built so much muscle in such a short period of time. Now, it's not because... 15 to 20 reps is superior for building muscle. It's because I never did it. Yes. Once I jumped into it, it was such a new and novel uh, stimulus. My body responded incredibly. My greatest hypertrophy gains came from this. Mm. And, and that was, it really sent me down the rabbit hole of like reading the studies to support all this stuff. That's where I kind of pieced all this together was like you, Sal, for sure, the at least the first five years of lifting I don't think I lifted a weight over six reps. Mm -hmm. Like it was everything I had read up until that point was if you want to get big, you want to build muscle, yeah. six, six reps, six reps right. tops, right? So everything went, and I got stronger in those years, those five years of lifting. So, you know, and I got a little bit bigger. And so I felt like, yeah, I definitely, I, nothing was going to change my mind at that point that, that, that this was another round. I believe it, for me, it was like a, some bodybuilder or trainer or trainer that I, was I met. was a five by five guy, like forever. Right. And then and he I'm still kind of like that. Tells me to go and do 15 to 20 reps and just lighten the load. And I'm like, what? That's insane. But I was like, okay, I'm going to try this for a few weeks. And it, I just blew up. And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. I'm getting bigger right now off of lighter weight. And that, and then is you get stuck I, in that. I did. You know, <laughs> I got stuck in that for a really long time, plateaued. And that was what kind of sent me down the rabbit hole of like reading and figuring out, oh, okay, what I need to do is I need to periodize this and, and cycle through these rep ranges. That's where the real benefit you is. You know, it's funny. I, I was thinking, like, I, I don't even know if you remember, but you introduced me to supersetting. And I never even did that before, uh, you know, through my entire athletic career. And I got to 24. And then Adam was like, I'm going to take you through this workout. I think you're working with a bunch of bodybuilders at the time. So I would like, uh, I, I was doing bench. And then all of a sudden he's like, okay, now we're going to do some push it like right away. And I'm like, right away? <laughs> Where, where's the rest? Yeah. You know, I just didn't get it. And then I'm like, ah, oh, no. I, I fucking blew up, but yeah. Uh, yeah, like just changing it up, like it's gonna have a massive impact on your body. Yeah, studies studies are pretty conclusive. They show that the rep ranges between one to like thirty all build muscle. They all build muscle so long as the tension is sufficient, and the intensity is sufficient, um, and all of those will slow down and stop building muscle if you only ever do those rep ranges, regardless of what you're in. So you'll benefit through cycling through them. Now, I typically recommend anywhere between three to five weeks of staying in a particular rep range before moving out of one. Um, so you want to kind of squeeze the benefit out of that rep range before you move into another one. Um, but yeah, that's it's that's it's a great one. This is why I think that so many people uh, that take the advice of Stan Efforting are blown away uh, by his because he like preaches you know 20, 20 reps in squats. Oh, 20 rep squats! Like oh. nobody does that. That's why. Oh, that's well, why he got influenced by Flex Wheeler, right? No, no, yeah. he influenced. Oh, he Flex. Unf okay, he, he influenced Flex on doing the the twenty rep range and just blew blew his mind too like it absolutely yeah. and and the re, and what it is is that it's so novel for like 99% of the population because even people that rotate their rep ranges typically deadlifting and squatting they ain't fucking around with more than 12 15 top reps yeah. maybe right and they probably rarely do that because we all know that feels like cardio when you do oh, that oh if you've never done yeah. 20 reps of squats you are in uh, for some shit yes yeah. it is brutal grueling it is difficult, and, very difficult and so i think really it's not that the number 20 is magical it's that very few people that like sal saying the the studies are conclusive anything from basically 1 to 30 is going to build muscle is going to support hypertrophy and because so few of people ever push squats to 20 reps, just simply running three weeks where you commit to saying, okay, I'm squatting 20 reps every single every single time I squat for the next three to four weeks, watch how much your legs blow up because oh, you just never do it. Next question is from Nathan N. Norman. I recently came across conflicting arguments regarding the correlation between lean muscle mass and resting metabolic rate. Why do you think most study, most of these studies seem to suggest that the increase is fairly minimal. So well, the, I, I'm confused on what the so, question is. So here. I'll, I'll break it down for mm -hmm. you. So what he's talking about is how you know we talk about building muscle speeds up the metabolism. Right. 
Then p- studies will come out showing uh, one this, pound just, of muscle. You just addressed this. Yeah, one pound of muscle only burns, you know, this many more calories. And adding five pounds of muscle isn't going to increase your metabolism. There's too many other much. variables that the study doesn't take into consideration. It, there's also this: is that when what you're don't know when too. you're when you're trying to build, when your body's trying to build, it just becomes less efficient with calories. So. There is yes, there is this this caloric number. There there is a, a certain amount of calories that muscle will build, and it's more than however many calories a pound of fat, for example, uh, will will end up burning. That's true. That number right there is not a ton, but there is this inefficiency that happens with calories. I've seen this time and time again with clients. I'll take a client and I'll have her gain four pounds of muscle, which if you do the direct you know, numbers should only boost your metabolism by about 50 calories a day, but it, I'm having her eat 600 or 700 more calories a day, and she's getting leaner. It's that I I hate this, and I get really irritated by the 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 guys that try the guys or girls that try and counter this message because I think it's a very good message. I think it's the right message to be telling people because more people need to strength train, more people need to be focused on building lean body mass. Uh, because of how much it impacts your metabolism. And then out comes somebody, and I wish I knew who first did it because they deserve to be slapped for it, <laughs> who comes out and isolates you know, fat and muscle and then shows that it's not as what everyone's been exaggerating of you know, for every pound. Because I used to say this as a trainer to get this point across to my clients. I would, I would actually I'd relate it to a big McDonald's Big Mac. I remember this. Mm-hmm. I had the same spiel to everybody that, listen, if we can put – you know, three to five pounds of muscle on your body, literally just getting that on your body, not losing any body fat, not changing anything in your diet, you will be able to eat an additional 300 or so calories. That's like a Big Mac Mm -hmm. that you could have and cancel out. And just to give them that visual and understanding of how important it was that we build muscle. And then, of course, later on comes out the study that show that that's not true. It's maybe five calories or whatever. Well, yeah, that's just measuring metabolically what muscle is doing and what fat is doing in the body and what it what it what it needs for energy what you're not taking into consideration is the digestive system you're not taking into consideration the signal that you're sending to to build the uh, calories that are having to get al- allocated to recovery to adaptation yeah, and like there's more of, there's more than just those and we need to we need to understand something that the mammalian metabolism is extremely complex it's I, I could probably say that it's the second most complex thing that we've observed in the universe right underneath the right below the brain the human brain so we don't know everything here's a good example if you take somebody and you bump their calories a little bit they start to burn more calories. They don't even have to do anything else. You just start bumping their calories a little bit and they start to burn more calories. You start to cut their calories a little bit, their body starts to burn less calories. How is this happening? Even though there may be even no, no difference in tissue, you can measure their body fat and their muscle, right. nothing's changing. How are they burning more calories? We don't really know, but the, the best theory that I've heard is that your body can become more or less efficient with calories. Sending the signal to the body to build muscle promotes inefficiency with calories. It promotes a faster metabolism because you're trying to build muscle and, and other things are happening in the body. And again, I've, I've seen this time and time again. I've had many clients who gained five pounds of muscle, not a lot, but their metabolism boost was massive and didn't directly correlate I, to the amount of muscle. I like gained. this question because it creates a discussion around a topic that is nuanced and that I think it's it reminds me of my pet peeve of and why we do what we do is – there's no study that that could counter what I've seen on hundreds. I mean, I'm in the middle of it, right, like this exact topic right now is what I'm working with two female clients right now in building their metabolism and getting to eat, eat more calories. And both of them, when I got a hold of them, and this is not even that long ago, were eating 1,500 and 1,700 calories. And both of them are in the 2,200 and 2,300 calorie range right now, and neither of them are putting weight on the scale. Right? How the fuck did that happen yeah. in that short amount of time? I didn't put 30 pounds of muscle on them. Right. And based off of these studies that show that it's only a, a few calorie difference, that's what it would be. And I didn't build 30 yeah, and, pounds on these girls. And you want to talk about studies, okay? So let's, let's look at the studies where they're actually looking at people and seeing what happens when they diet and lift weights versus diet and do cardio versus just diet. These studies exist. That's it's okay. There's another effect. Okay. And you don't need a study to do this. Just check your own behaviors. Um, I was just commenting to Katrina about how important it is, uh, that for me to be a better husband and a better father to get my, my, getting my workouts in whenever I lift and get a good lift in early on in the day, 
when I come home, I just it's I I notice I'm very aware of this. I start cleaning up around the house and I start doing things for a helper. When I've had a day where I miss my workout or I'm off on my diet, I feel lethargic, I'm tired, I come home and I want to sit down on the fucking couch. Mm-hmm. I just move less. Mm-hmm. You how do you you can't that's not going to be in that study. We're not measuring that. We're not we're not we're isolating just muscle and fat. We're not taking into consideration behaviors. That's a good mm-hmm. that's a very good point. And, but but even even when you look at everything else, like I'll, I'll, I just pulled up an easy study right here where they took participants, older participants, and they compared fat loss with just diet plus walking, diet plus weight training, or diet alone. Diet plus walking resulted in 16 pounds of fat loss. Diet plus weight training resulted in about 17 pounds of weight loss. Almost equivalent, right? But here's the difference. Muscle mass loss was four pounds with the diet plus walking. Diet alone resulted in less muscle mass loss than cardio or walking plus diet. Resistance training obviously resulted in no, uh, no muscle mass loss. So what does that tell you? Well, that tells you that your body tries to adapt its metabolism, tries to change things. Resistance training of all the forms of exercise is the one that promotes the faster metabolism. It's the one that promotes, and the, and the part of the way it promotes that is by keeping and building muscle. But it's not the only way. There are other things that are happening we quite don't understand. But I can tell you again this much: I've worked with lots and lots of clients, and I when I have them lift weights and I have them change their nutrition, I can see big changes in how many calories they can eat and maintain their weight or get leaner. Big changes. I've had clients that went from. 1,200 calories to 2,200 calories I'm a telling day. you right, I'm in the middle of it right now. I haven't had a hold of these girls longer than a couple months. Yeah. This is In a couple months' time, we've moved from 1,500 up to 21, 2,200 yeah, calories. Huge difference. And they are not 30 pounds bigger. Yeah, they're, yeah, the same, yeah. they're the same weight I got a hold of them at. And that's the goal. And I keep telling, telling them is that my goal is to keep increasing your calories and seeing that scale just kind of hover around the same yep. thing. They are weighing in at 121, 130. These are their two girls' weights. And they're sticking right at that weight. And I'm just bumping calories, yep. bumping and, calories. And, and now why is that beneficial? Well, it's beneficial because you live in a, a wonderful time with lots of food all around you. You live in a, in a time where, where daily life is sedentary. You don't have to be strenuous and break your back. Having a faster metabolism or a more inefficient Metabolism is an advantage. Well, and, and it just how, keeps you leaner. And easier. how great is it going to be for these two girls who uh, initially what they want to do is lean out, right? And th- how great is it going to be for them when I get them up to twenty seven hundred calories and I go, okay, it's time to diet down to twenty five or twenty three hundred calories, and they get to reduce down to down to a high amount, yeah, a, a, a five hundred more calories than they were used to eating in the first place, and their body starts leaning out. Oh, like that's the, the beauty of it, and and that is the real takeaway and message. And the the trainers out there, or the the scientists that are putting out the the studies to try and counter this message, it, it irritates me because yeah, the study is correct. Yes, when we measure it that way, but there's too many other factors. There's too many other unknowns. And coming from people that have been doing this for a really long time, the impact that you make on somebody's metabolism by putting them on a strength focused program and building muscle is unbelievable when it comes to metabolism. Next question is from Solomon Roskin. What are the best ways to deal with stress? You know, mm. uh, you know when you look at when you look at the studies Balls. on stress and you look at uh, effective techniques. There's a lot of different things that are out there that can help people deal with stress, but there's one thing that probably will make the biggest impact on how you handle stress. And this one thing I'm going to talk about has been echoed in many practices that span the world. Some of them are, are found in religious practices, others in, in philosophies. And that is your how you uh, you accept or you try to fight mm-hmm. your current situation. Okay, so I'll give you a good example. I'm, I was uh, reading this book, the, the book with Dr. John Gottman, and he talks about the stress of having a child, that how that'll, uh, how, how that'll stress out couples quite a bit. In fact, you see divorce spike after a couple has children. However, the couples that accept that their life will never be the same the husband that accepts that his he's he's not going to just have sex whenever he wants. The wife that accepts that she just can't go out to dinner all the time. That they accept that they're having a child. Life is never going to be the same mm-hmm. as it was before. The stress doesn't bother them. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not stressed. It just means that they're not uh, fighting it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like it's like this. It's like imagine if you were sad and then you were sad that you were sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow, why am I sad? I'm so, and it makes you even more sad about being sad. It's like a spiral effect. So one of the number one things with stress is just whatever your situation is in, 
uh, you have to uh, acceptance makes a big deal, makes a big difference. Like, okay, well, this is just the way it is right now. Right now, I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm working this many hours. Right now, I'm handling all these different things. I need to just accept it, and that reduces the the pain from the stress significantly. And it's, it's something you can apply. Anybody can apply. We suffer more in imagination than we do yeah, in reality. Yeah, all in our minds. Yeah, yeah. One, it's all about reframing, right? It's it, that's the first step to it. There, now, obviously, there's things that you can do. I think uh, in your daily practices that can help mitigate this, but it, all of them really go back to helping you reframe your thinking. That's uh, with the meditation, the getting good rest, like all of it just helps you have better, clear thinking about what's going on in your life. And it's the ability for you to reframe what's what's happening to help out the stress. And the, the thing that's helped me uh, and that I share with people that I think is uh, done wonders for clients that I've discussed this with and, and even applying it to my own life is that is just looking at all 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 stress that I deal with, whether it be work, personal life, whatever, they're all challenges and they're all difficulties. And the greater the challenge, the greater the difficulty, the better it is on the other side. Mm. So learning to look at it like, you know, yeah, okay, it's a stress right now. When I break through the stress, I adapt or get over it. Uh, the reward is re- is more rewarding than what the stress was. And the greater it is, the greater the reward on the other side, which is how you handle the bigger, harder ones, right? Because everybody, and there's no such thing as big problems, only problems that we make big. So when you have these like life-altering things, deaths in the family, these hardships with work. Like Jim Quickian. <laughs> Did you like it? <laughs> hey, you know what? The pure, it took 45 it minutes worked. for me. Oh, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. I dropped you some Jim yeah, Quick stoicism in there. Like, yeah. yeah, shit, dude, it does work. I Just, told it, you. it takes my body 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, a little bit longer. Yeah, a little You're bit taller. longer. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. It took a little bit longer to get <laughs> there. It's, it's a longer yeah, pull. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right on Organifi. Yeah. 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 I think, I think too, like just taking an inventory of uh, what what are the potential stressors going on with you right now. Sometimes it's, it's good to acknowledge it and you don't realize – where it's all coming from sometimes. And I know that, uh, you know, I, I went through a, a period where it was just, I, I was trying to take on like way too many things at, at once and then not realizing what I, where my deficits were, which then stressed me out. Cause then I wasn't contributing to those things that I needed to contribute to. And then, you know, just looking at all these things, prioritizing, uh, I mean, this is a lot of where you see like, you know, these TV shows where they come in and they have somebody like clean your house. House. Like, it, let's organize everything. Let's get rid of, let's be a minimalist. Let's get rid of all this stuff because you don't need it. Or, you, you know, like there's, there's practices like you'd mentioned with meditation. There's, there's ways, there's tools out there for you to be able to handle certain components of this, but it always revolves around your mindset. Yeah. Uh, and, and the thing is like, you're going to face adversity constantly. So it, it's about like learning how to adjust and, and to be able to, you know, be in, in a calm state of, of mind. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of the reason why people feel so stressed nowadays is because, because there's a bit of a myth out there that, you know, it's the stressful times we've ever lived in human history, and mm. you know we're just so much stress. Stop watching the news for one. Yeah, okay. It's it's that's actually not true. Okay, it's not true. Talk to your grandparents. You know they they, they had all kinds of crazy stress. Yeah. Money was way tighter. People would die People from dying diseases from, like rickets. They whatever. would lose yeah. children. Um, you know it, it was it's it's actually objectively the least stressful time uh, ever. Yet we feel more stress. I think part of the reason why we feel more stress is because. We think we're not supposed to. We think we're always supposed to be happy. Right. We're always supposed to have what we want. Whereas when you when you talk to you know, and I, I it's one of the reasons why I love training uh, people in advanced age. I would talk to them about these kinds of things, and they tell me, "You just accepted it. That was life. That well, was just the way it was." It's the resistance yeah. to the way things are that causes much of our stress. When you look at like uh, people like Wim Hof, who teaches people how to tolerate the freezing, frigid, cold water mm-hmm. that they'll jump into. One of the things that the, he teaches you to do is just accept the fact that you're, it's cold. You're yeah. not fighting it. You're not resisting it. You get yeah. in, you accept it. You acknowledge it, it and, and then you you calm your body and, and deal with it. That's well, right. In the defense of all the millennials that are freaking out over all the stress that we have, it's, <laughs> is this, is that what I think we have is I think we have uh, more low-level stress than we've ever had. I think that we are so attached to our phones. We're so attached to our email we're so easily connected to so many other people that influence our lives and our mood. And 
you know, just because it's not a, a lion jumping out and eat, trying to eat us type of stress or someone dying of fucking scurvy in our family, like because it's not a stress like that. It's this you low a family of pirates. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's this low level stress that they're constantly get. And I think it's the compounding effect of that, that when, oh, when something happens when you're at home or one something that's a, you know, maybe not like a lion jumping out of you, but a, a much yeah. higher elevation. I think it feels like it's so much more because you don't realize when you're scrolling through Instagram and you think you're just liking photos and looking at what your friends are doing, really what you're doing subconsciously is comparing yourself to them and where you're at. Why trying am, to get validation. Yeah, why am I not on that trip? Exactly. Why am I not on that exactly. This and, life sucks. That and, life looks exactly. great. Exactly. And so you're, al you're already framing your how you're going to look at this obstacle or challenge you're going to have maybe five hours later in the day. So I scrolled through Instagram. Now, I didn't think of that scrolling through Instagram as a stress, but it most certainly was because subconsciously I was comparing myself to all my friends and feeling bad about myself and where I'm at currently in my life, even if it wasn't like a major focus, it happened. And then I get to work and I'm emailing back and forth and I get an email from somebody that is a disgruntled employee or disgruntled customer service issue. And now I'm dealing with that. And then I go home and then my wife drops some serious news on me. That's like a real fucking stress in our life. She lost her job. Now we're going to have, I'm alone going to have to support the whatever. Now that's a real fucking stress, but because you had all that low level shit, I think it's the the, the combination of all of it that makes that seem Dude, so fucking paramount. It, it is, and again, it's again. I really think the big and it, there's a lot of different things you could do: exercise, be healthy, it makes you more yeah. resilient to stress. You could structure your life so that you have some downtime. You can learn how to meditate, maybe prayer because it's another form of meditation, right? right. Uh, you know that gives you a sense of meaning and purpose. That's all very important, but at the end, at the very top of it really is just not resisting and accepting reality because some, reality is in front of you, right? Things are happening. You you have a job, you have bills, maybe you have kids. Uh, and you, that, if you're, in, if you're in resistance to what is real, you're at war with reality. That's stressful. That's going to make life real hard. I remember one time I was, I was in the car with the kids and with Jessica and we were driving, I think we were driving to my cousin's house, and it was taking forever. There was a traffic jam. We were in the car. It was a two-hour trip. It took us like five hours to get where we were. And I was so angry and irritated, just like which you know, driving in traffic will do that to a lot of us. And I remember Jessica, she, we were talking. And she goes, why are you so stressed out? I'm like, because we're in the car and I'm so pissed off or whatever. And she's like, well, you know, what is it that's bad? I'm going to get there. She's like, okay, what do you want to do when we get there? I want to be with everybody. She's like, you're with everybody now. You know, and I thought, mm -hmm. you're right. We're all in the car together. We're just going to go somewhere else and be together. Yeah. And it immediately changed how I felt. Immediately. I thought, oh, yeah, I'm with everybody now. We're all in the car. Let's all just hang out just like we would when we got to our destination. That change, that reframing of, of life and where you're at. And again, this book by Dr. Gottman talks about this. He says, the couples that succeed with children are the ones that accept that life will not be the same anymore. Mm -hmm. The ones that have that struggle are the ones that struggle with the fact that it's not like it used to be, and I want it to be the way it was. Yeah. It's not going to be the way it was. Well, it's just yeah, not when you start living in the past or like thinking too much in the future, it's like as present as you can get, and that's why like breathing and these techniques they help you to be conscious about like what's right in front of you, totally, and, and to just disregard all that stuff. Totally. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, resources, and books. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us. On Instagram, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Oh, and by the way, you can look up Doug too. Doug is at Mind Pump Doug. Doug the Hug.